Hi everyone. Okay, in lesson 2.5 we're actually going to start talking about visible light. We've already talked about the electromagnetic spectrum. We've talked about things like um, UV light, UV rays, um, radio waves, microwaves, and all that stuff is important. Um, but we're not really going to talk about it too much after this. What you need to know is how they go in order, uh, which one has the most energy, which one has the least energy, where they fit on the spectrum, and maybe one or two uses or dangers associated with each. So if you can make yourself a little chart with that information, that's all you need from, from Lesson 2-4. We are going to focus in the center now of the electromagnetic spectrum with light, um, because that is very important to who we are and, and, uh, and how our world works. So let's just focus now on the small part of the, visible, of the electromagnetic spectrum that is visible light. All right, so light moves in a single medium without bending. That is a... A very important thing, I'm going to say that again. Light moves in one medium in a straight line, like a meter stick. It does not bend. Light only bends when you go into a different medium. Now, that doesn't mean that light slows down. That doesn't mean that light is dependent on medium, because it's not. It's an electromagnetic wave, and it's not. However, when it hits it, because it's an actual physical thing, because there are actually particles that make up light, it will bend it. All right, so that is important to remember. Now, there's different ways that light can bend. The first one we're going to talk about is called refraction. Okay, Refraction is when waves speed up or slow down due to the traveling in a different medium. In other words, they'll bend. So here you see, if you were to put a ruler into a container of water, it would look like the ruler is bent. It's not. All right, your light, The light is just hitting your eye at a slightly different angle. Here, you have two glasses of water. I think this picture was pretty cool. And you have a straw. Now, look closely. All right, the straw appears to bend, which we know, right? This, the, it appears to be disjointed. But if you notice, in the glass on the left, the, uh, the, the straw is bent to the left. And in the glass in the right, the straw is bent to the right. Anybody know um, why? Can you think? The answer is because there are two different liquids in those jars. We always think, or in, the, in those cups, we always think that clear colorless liquids are water. That's not true. Uh, one of them's water, and one of them's alcohol, uh, like rubbing alcohol. And you can see that both of them bend light very differently. The way that a liquid or a solid bends light is known as its refraction index. Um, and they can either be positive or negative. If they're positive, they bend light one way. If they're negative, they go the other way. That'll become very important when you get to upper division and you talk about something called Snell's Law. But right now, just know that refraction means that light is going to bend when it hits a medium. Something else that could happen is called reflection. That's when light hits a medium and bounces back at exactly the same speed or exactly the same angle. Um, mirrors do this, and we call them plain mirrors because they're not bent. Mirrors that are bent, convex or concave, will, will alter light slightly. Um, it'll still reflect it back, but it'll make it either larger or smaller, depending on, on which way the mirror is bent. But you can actually see here, with this little eye, the eye is seeing the candle. The light is coming from the candle. It bounces back to the eye in exactly the same way. The eye appears to see itself in front because the light is coming back in exactly the same way. So those are two words we need to know. Refraction and reflection. Reflection is when light comes back exactly the same way. Refraction, refraction is when light bends. Now, why is this important? Well, that brings us to our next geek of the week, Dr. Charles, Charles Cow. Now, none of you have probably heard of Dr. Charles Cow, but all of you know his work because it was Dr. Charles Cow who invented fiber optic technology. We're going to talk about that in just a second, too. So, uh, Charles Cow was born November 4th, 1933. He is still alive, so we don't know when he'll die. That's a picture of him. He is an electrical engineer from Hong Kong, China. He has dual British and U.S. citizenship. Quick history uh, trivia question here. Why does he have British citizenship if he was uh, born in Hong Kong? Let you think about that one for a little while. He won the Nobel Prize for Physics in 2009, so not, not too long ago. Uh, for his work in optical technology, and he is sometimes called the father of broadband. We know what broadband means, right? 
right? It means internet. Without this man's work, we would not have internet. We would not have digital phones the way that we do now. So what did he do? Um, what did he do in physics that was so great? All right, he was the first inventor of the fiber optic cable. He used something that we now know as the principle of total internal reflection. So let's talk about what a fiber optic cable is. It's a very thin glass tube. Sometimes they can be optically perfect um, plastic and they can bend. Now, as the, as the cable itself bends, as this piece of plastic or glass bends, the light inside is be okay so let me let me back up you have a light source right here all right and i shoot light into this incredibly thin piece of plastic or glass remember this is not to scale we're talking about something maybe maybe the width of a spaghetti strand so i shoot it in and because we shoot it in at just the right angle and this glass or plastic is made of just the right medium it reflects and all of that light stays inside the tube and it bounces to here and there and there and there and there. Notice that the light never escapes the tube. It always stays inside. Then I shoot a beam of a different color light or a different wavelength of light into the tube at a different angle and it will bounce too. All right. Now put yourself at the other end of this tube. That light is going to bounce all the way through this tube, sometimes for miles. And when it comes out the other end, you can receive the, the information. So if you have a light sensitive pad at, in your cable box on the other side of this signal, you can receive signals, beep, 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 beep. I mean, they wouldn't actually beep, they would blink, 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 blink. Different light sources at different, um, at different angles at the speed of light, 300 million meters per second, going from wherever the signal is being um, generated all the way to your cable box, lightning fast, um, and that is how we have, you know, six million different channels on satellite and cable TV, whereas when I was growing up, we had like, you know, seven and HBO. HBO was awesome. That was it. That was all we had because we didn't have this technology. Remember, he won the Nobel Prize for this in 2009. So the reason we can do all of this now is because we can shoot all kinds of little beams of light through these tiny little tubes and because I mean, it's hard to, to imagine the fact that the light stays inside the tube. If you were to look at the tube in the middle, if I were to look at the tube right about here, I wouldn't actually see anything. The, the tube itself would appear dark because the light stays inside the tube even though there's no wiring around it and it pops out on the other side. Very neat stuff. When you get to class next time, I have a demo for this which is so much fun to play with. Um, you'll really like it. All right, so that was it. Uh, no math. We're not going to have any more math. Um, for the rest of this unit, we have learned all the math that we're basically going to. So if you have not yet memorized those formulas or if you are having any trouble in the math 2-1 through 2-3, you need to let me know as soon as possible because it's not going away. It's going to be on the test, and it's not going to get any harder. All right, so now is the time, all right, from now to spring break is the time to lock down any math problems we're having so we can hit the ground running when we come back from spring break and we start the super math heavy unit, which is mechanics. All right, so good luck on your homework, and I will see you next time.